flow of the miracle, it's all about the connecting and the joining. And it's not about anything else. You know, you're not only not a fault finder, but you're not, your perception is not looking for problems, looking for errors. It's just tuned into this call for love that, that really everybody, regardless of appearances, just wants to feel this love and this connection. It wasn't focused on the body, and therefore the, the joy was there, the joy of connecting. And we come from a, a, a conditioning and a culture and a society that's all ego based on finding problems and diagnosing problems in form. And once you start with the curriculum of the Course, it will take you deeper and deeper into states of, of acceptance, into states of, of peace and non-judgment, in which you really do not become focused on the form. You know, the form doesn't grab your attention anymore, it doesn't distract you, because you don't find value in that and putting judgments on, on the form. The Spirit will just keep guiding and guiding and guiding more to a state of detachment where the form is irrelevant. And, and perception is selective. I mean, I remember I was here in Australia several years ago and, and at the end of the gathering, I had a wonderful gathering and I left and then on the way back in the car right home, the organizer was saying, he was apologizing for the drunk man at the gathering who was so belligerent. And I was like, oh, I must have missed that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even remember a drunk man um, at the gathering. I mean, it's, your perception becomes more and more unified in the joy. And you, you really have a unified perspective in the whole thing, and therefore the things that the people identify as problems, and may even apologize for, you don't even notice. You know, they literally go, they're not in your awareness. So, that's how perception works. We just become more and more trained in the miracle, and, and then what would seem to be distractions, um, they, they don't have any space. You don't have space in your mind for distractions or interruptions, for whatever. You're just so focused on your purpose that the rest just starts to fade away. The Holy Spirit knows that the mind that's sleeping and dreaming of this world has a self-concept. Uh, we talked about the personality self, that's an aspect of the, of the self-concept. It's the personality self and the entire world and cosmos that surrounds that personality self. It's all part of a a giant mask, like a cosmic mask. And the only way out of this trap, of, of this mask, is, is to be given almost like successive masks that you, you know, just like in Halloween, children don't always wear the same mask. You know, every Halloween they wear different masks year to year. And teacher of God, or healer, or you know, whatever, those are masks as well. And the Course and Presence of the Holy Spirit will take the mind deeper and deeper on a journey of eventually laying aside all the masks and having one final mask, we'll call it the Mask of Forgiveness. Because in, in eternity and in the Kingdom of Heaven there are no masks at all. And there's no forgiveness in Heaven, there's no need for it. Uh, everything's just pure oneness. So it's almost like you're going to go through successive masks and, and at every point there's still going to be judgments involved. You know, even for, for someone that was identified as being like a mystic or a saint, it's still a mystic mask or a saint mask. And you know, it's always going to be masks in this world. And to the extent that it still seems to be identified as personal in any way, even in the faintest, smallest way, there's still going to be a sense of guilt that will arise from time to time. And the guilt sounds like, you fake, you phony. If the people knew <laughs> uh, what you're thinking and what you're going through, they wouldn't be kissing your feet. 
if they knew that and this and that. So, you know, it's just going to go in that direction. But, but the Holy Spirit has to keep exchanging these masks to let you kind of move up the ladder of consciousness. Uh, so, each time you exchange a mask, the mask gets a little more expansive. It's much more expansive. It's much more closer to wholeness. And it just keeps on going that way. So, the thing about it is that you are always asked to be authentic. In other words, you are never asked to pretend. There is no part in the Course of Miracles where Jesus says, just fake it till you make it. <laughs> uh, no, he just never says that. It's not in there. He's, he's big on authenticity. He's big on being in touch with your emotions and sharing your emotions. And so, you know, the kind of groups that I work with and the communities I work with, you know, we have these expression sessions and always authenticity is encouraged because it's such a deep journey. And you don't want to feel like you hold, have to hold back on certain things. If you, for example, are like a counselor or a teacher and you have clients, you know, then that's a mechanism that the Holy Spirit is using for purification. And anytime we're in social, social work at any time where we have lots of clients or patients that we see, it's like having bunches of mirrors coming at you. And you, you get to have a session and then you can go, wow, that showed a lot about me in that <laughs> session. Uh, whether they went away happy or not, or whatever, you can say, wow, that, that really showed me a lot about what I'm still believing about myself and holding on to. So that's why we have say, sayings such as, you know, physician heal thyself. You know, the Spirit's always reminding us that it's our own lesson and that it's a very, very deep journey. So, when those contradictions come up, it's okay. It's, it's perfectly wonderful. It's like you're just allowing those contradictions into awareness, just so that, that they can be released. And then, as you release a few more contradictions, we'll say, uh, the guidance is always there in terms of the next step. We just take another step up the ladder of consciousness, and then there'll be the next and the next. And we just, to the best of our ability, we try not to put any limits on this opening, on this journey that we're taking. We let, you know, it's like love lift us up to where we belong, you know, take us higher and higher towards that that final concept, that final self-concept of forgiveness, of a forgiven world, of a happy dream, you know, or the real world that Jesus talks about. And, um, and it's just great to know that you don't really have to uh, hide and protect anything. You can keep continuing on that way. This journey, this spiritual journey, it, it requires so much allowance and permission. I mean, it's at times when you start to really allow the darkness to surface, it, it does feel paralyzing, it can feel very disorienting, disjunctive, it can feel intense and overwhelming. And in that sense, that's really why you, you have to be patient, you have to work with the Holy Spirit, because it can seem like the emotions the more you allow them to come, it can, they can almost feel disabling. And it definitely feels like a split moment when you're having these moments of miraculous gratitude and joy and connection. And then it's like, what is this? Like, oh, and I was doing so well. And all of a sudden, whammo. And that's why, you know, it takes a lot of faith and trust in the whole movement, in the whole process. And it's also why we've had those, a lot of discussions about spiritual community. Whether you just have a, a partner that you're matched up with in a beautiful vibrational way, and that they can hold space for allowing those emotions up without taking it personally, or you have a group of people, mighty companions that, that are reminders that hold that sense of spaciousness while that's coming up. It's like going through a birth canal. You know, it's, and you really have to, to give yourself full permission 
to, to go through it. And, um, you know, then you start to see that the whole spiritual journey is not all just peaches and cream, it's, you know, it's working through these emotions. And so that's what I did. I mean, my life had a lot of aspects of, of just crying and tears just pouring through and pouring out and everything. And a lot of, of sense of patience of just like, okay, it's going to look however it looks. I'm not going to judge it and shut it off. I'm going to let it spin out. I'm going to let it uh, blow through. I'm going to let it, you know, really reach what it needs to do without trying to, to shut it off. And uh, that's really the faith that it takes to be on this journey of, as the Course says, going through the darkness to the light. And not just kind of just, you know, trying to guard against those emotions and just hold it together. You know, maintain a sense of pseudo-peace because it's whatever, spiritually, metaphysically correct. You know, but to really let yourself move through it. So, I know we've talked quite a bit about that and, and that's why these unfolding communities are, are helpful. And even with course groups, they could be a, a support, you know, to go through this emotional um, change. Although, the deeper you go, that you, sometimes you may even find yourself outgrowing your course group. If, if you're going through a lot of these emotions and you find everybody's fishing, in your group and there's a lot of anxiety in there, it may be that, that you kind of, you, you have to be open to the Spirit giving you the symbol of another step that will help you. In my case, I, I was guided to hermitages. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll let all the rage and blackness up. Uh, exactly how am I supposed to do that? Well, hermitage, okay. I find that trees and rocks are, are very, uh, it can maintain great stillness <laughs> uh, in the face of rage. And, uh, but see, again, the Spirit guided me, you know, it was, it was like, you know, if you will be provided with everything that you need. And uh, those were very, very valuable times.